Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I'll be going over how to upgrade your T5 and T6 ships up to the new X2 status. I'll also be going through the process of getting the upgrades through the cheapest routes possible. And lastly, I'll be going over some brand new tools from the folks over at STO Better that can help you figure out what consoles and traits you may want to put on the new slots that these upgrades unlock. As always, chapters are listed down below. The first thing that I want to mention today is that before you go in and upgrade a ship, you should take a minute, check the Stow Wiki, and make sure that that is the best version of the ship that you can get before you burn your upgrades on it. With many of the Sea Store ships in the game, they also have a fleet version, and that fleet version will come with an extra console slot along with a 10% increase to both hull and shield capacity. So if you're going through and upgrading a ship and it has a fleet version, you would obviously want to go and upgrade the fleet one rather than the sea store one. And the reason for that is because to the game, the sea store and fleet versions of ships are two entirely different things. So upgrades to one do not carry over to the other. So again, just take a minute before you go in and hit those upgrades and make sure you're not potentially wasting upgrades on a weaker version of the, the ship. Next up, I want to go through and show you guys the best routes to get both the T5 and T6 upgrades. So if you're looking at the player exchange and you want to just get these with EC, they are going to show up under the Starship Upgrade tab here at the bottom left on the exchange. And right now, the T5 upgrades are about 60 million EC per. They're just named Starship Upgrade Requisition. And for the T6X upgrades, those are 65 mil per right now and they're named Experimental Ship Upgrade Token. Now, if you don't want to use EC to get them, they are both available via the, the C store also. If you're looking at the T5 upgrades, it's 700 Zen or seven bucks for one of them, 20,000 Zen or 20 bucks for the four pack for the T5 upgrades. And for the T6X upgrades, you're going to be looking at 1,000 Zen for one, 1,500 for a two pack, or 2000 Zen for a three pack. Now for the T5 upgrades, I think the best route to get those is via the player exchange. You know, they're 60 million EC per. So if you really have a T5 ship that you're wanting to upgrade, there's no T6 version of it or something, then I would just go through and pick up some keys with Zen, sell them, and then use the EC to, to pick up these T5 upgrades through the exchange. For the experimental ship upgrade tokens, though, the T6X tokens, do not buy them through the C store. It is a bit of a ripoff with the, the pricing that they have here. Rather, you're better off taking advantage of the Phoenix prize pack events. So I've talked about this in a prior video, and I'll link that full discussion down below if you want to hear more about that. But the summary is that when they run the Phoenix prize pack events, which is usually about a week every or so months, they will uh, enable the ability to convert the various Phoenix tokens over to T6X experimental ship upgrade tokens. So five ultra rare tokens could be converted to a single experimental ship upgrade, 20 very rares to one, or 100 rares to, to one. And if you do the math, it ends up being that the Phoenix route, if you're patient and you wait for a Phoenix event, is the most cost-effective route to get those experimental ship upgrade tokens. If we go back to the C store, you'll see that a three pack is 20,000 or it is 2,000 set in the uh, the C store there, so it's 20 bucks. And if we look at this calculator that I have here, this spreadsheet, you can see that if you're going the Phoenix route and you're selling your Zen or at a rate of like 500 dil per Zen then you could go through and get about 250 of the the phoenix packs here and you would be expected to get at least 12 t6x upgrades from the phoenix packs if you were to go through and wait for a phoenix prize pack event so that is the most cost effective way to go through and get these upgrades and the only downside is that the experimental ship upgrade tokens from the Phoenix packs are bound. So you can't go through and sell them on the exchange, but given how much cheaper they are, I think that is 
a perfectly reasonable trade-off. And that is how I get the vast majority of my upgrade tokens is I will go through, rip open a ton of Phoenix packs, and then wait for for them to do one of those Phoenix prize pack events. And I convert the ultra rares over to the, the upgrade tokens. So I still have a lot of ships to upgrade and I am waiting like many of you now for, for them to run that event again. Now let's go through the process of actually upgrading a ship. And next up, I'm going to demonstrate how to go through and upgrade a ship from T5 t5x2 and t6 to t6x2 the process is very similar for for both of them here um, so starting off with the t5 with your base t5 ship you'll need that e5 upgrade the starship upgrade requisition and you'll hit that and what that does for you is it gives you a whole capacity boost gives you an extra console and it adds a starship mastery to your t5 ship so you just go through and hit that and that upgrade is now done now what you can do next is the same for both t5u and for a stock t6 ship and that is you'll have this button here and what this is is the first x upgrade this will net you an additional device slot an additional console slot and an additional starship trait slot this first one will cost just one experimental ship upgrade token and once you've done that, the next step would be to go to X2. So the button is the exact same. The difference is here is that the first X upgrade only needed one of these experimental ship upgrade tokens. And the second to get the X2 is going to require two. So you'll need a total of three of these experimental ship upgrade tokens to take a T6 ship or a T5U ship up to the x2 status so it is a bit costly but with that x2 you are gaining another device slot another universal console slot and another starship trait slot so once you have that all together you are able to get many many more slots on your ship now one thing i do want to mention is that when you go through and do these upgrades they do apply account wide for whatever characters have that exact ship on your account and for whenever you claim that ship on any other characters in the future so on this character i have the d7 merc worker flight deck carrier set up with the x2 upgrade and if i swap characters so i have it on my fed side here all you have to do is swap over to the other characters that have the ship that you're wanting to, to go through and apply the upgrade to. And head to the shipyard. So you'll do the, the exact same thing. Just head on down to the shipyard. But one thing you're going to notice is that the, the ship does not automatically go through an upgrade on your alts. What you'll have to do, and like in the case of this, this D7 here, um, what you'll see is that there's an upgrade button even though you've went through and upgraded it on a different character if you hit that however you'll see that given that you have already done that upgrade for that ship on a different character on your account that you have to go in and hit the button but the cost is zero so i can hit that it did not consume any tokens because i already paid for it on a different character and now I have this ship at the X2 status on another character on my account. So that is just something to keep in mind. I've seen some people freak out because they upgrade a ship on one character. They swap to a different character and they see that the upgrade button is still there. That is normal. You just have to go through, hit the button and complete the, the free upgrade. So don't freak out. That is just how it works. Um, and for... Any, any time you claim that ship on a new character in the future, it should automatically be unlocked at the X2, but it is possible you may have to hit the upgrade button. And if that's the case, again, you know, if you've done it on one character for that specific ship, it's going to be free on every other character on your account for that specific ship. 
Now, once you guys have your ships upgraded to X2, I know that there's going to be at least a few of you wondering, you know, what to slot in the additional console slots and additional Starship trade slots that these upgrades provide. Well, there are some really nice tools from the folks over at Stow Better that can give you some guidance on what traits and consoles you may want to consider putting in all of the new slots that you now have on your ship. So the first tool here is Alicia. This is one that they just released last week, and this is a console assistant. So what this does is it will let you input information about what you're trying to, to build with your ship, and it will give you a list of what consoles are going to be best for you to use. So to use this tool, you'll want to go to the, the link that I have down below. And the first thing you're going to want to do is go to file, make a copy at the top left. And this will make a copy of it on your Google Drive account so that you can actually go through and edit it. Then at the bottom left here, go to the console output tab. And here's where you can input your information. So let's just start at the top and work our way down. So what type of build are you using? Um, let's say I'm going for an energy build. Let's say I'm using beams. You know, let's say I'm on like a beam overload phaser build. So I'll hit that. Then there's price tier selection. You check each of these boxes for, for what type of ships you can afford to get for your build. You know, if you're able to, to go in and pick up promo ships, you hit that checkbox. And what you'll see is that over at the right side, it's going to start to, to populate um, the, the information over there. So select everything that is within your budget. So if you want to just go through and select everything just to, to see what the most optimal recommendations are, you can go through and do that. Um, but if you wanted to leave out, say, promo and lockbox ships, then you can also just go through and toggle those off. And for the event one down here, um, there is a drop down for what year you started playing or, or what year you started doing events so that it knows what you have access to. So I'm just going to hit 2014. Um, and then you need to input the number of consoles on your ship now. So, you know, let's say I'm, I'm going through and trying to figure out what the best things to slot on this D7 are. So it's got three universal, five engineering, three science, three tech. And if I go back to the sheet here, I can put in that information. So three universal, five engineering, three science, and three tactical. And you see that it's auto-populating the, the list over there. Now I'm going to say that this is eight energy weapons, because it is. And there is a drop down here, too, for if your ship is uh, from any of these, these races here. Um, there's sets that some of those ships have that may be worth using, but the ship that I'm selecting is not part of that, so I'm going to leave that alone. Um, I'm going to say that I am using universal designs and unconventional systems, um, and I am going to say that I do have a bias for, for hangar pets on this build because the, this specific build is a carrier. So here we go. We can see the information that it's recommending. And you can just go in, you know, and keep tuning the, the price here selection to, to see what the different options are. And here we can see the recommendations it has for me. And if I wanted to just focus on my weapons more than the, the pets, just hit that drop down there at the bottom left. And it's now set me up with a focus towards weapons. And if I wanted to have just a in between to, to like buff them, you know, both up quite a bit. They do have a sum option here, so it's none, sum, or maximum for the hanger bias. So I just tried sum there, and doesn't look like it did too much. Go back to, to none. And so it just changed some of the honorable mentions there. So you can play around with this, and it's telling you the best things you could slot in your universal consoles, the engineering, science, tactical. And if there's things you don't have, it does also include a list of honorable mentions. So some alternatives that you may want to consider. And again, you know, if you want to remove like promo, lockbox, uh, lobby, all the all the premium stuff here, you could go through and remove those from the recommendations to, to just have things that are a bit more accessible. 
So that's the first tool, very handy to use, and they did a very good job with this. Now the second tool is also from Mr. Better, and this is a tier list that they have over on their website. This has tabs here for different build types, so projectile, exotic, and energy, and then there's different columns here for the different firing modes. So if you're looking to boost up a fall, like a fall build or a beam overload build, you'd want to see what the highest ranked traits are in that, that column. So um, another thing you can do is if you're just wanting to look at like the beam overload traits, you could hit this drop down and sort nine to one. And that's going to show you the, the highest recommended traits first. You don't have to follow this, you know, 100%, but this is good to, to look at as a reference to get some ideas on what traits you may want to consider slotting next. Again, both of the tools that I just talked about are going to be linked down below. So if you want to check them out, links are in the description. And that is going to be it for today. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them down below or join the Discord, and I'll get back to you when I can. As always, thanks for watching and see you guys around.